All right, so now we're going to be looking at protocols, all right? And protocols are simply rules that we have to follow in order to carry out a specific thing. And since we're talking about computer networks here, the protocols for communication simply are the rules that define how things must communicate. Basic example, right? We have iPhones, we have Android phones, and even though we have different services on them, so WhatsApp, Facebook, Instagram, text messaging, when we send a text message or a WhatsApp message, both devices can send and receive exactly what the other person sent or received, or, well, what the other person sent, let's say, because we're using similar protocols for communicating. We were using um, similar characters, right? We're most likely using ASCII, A-S-C-I-I, -I, ASCII, where the characters are directly related to a number and that number can be directly converted to binary. So whenever that binary number or that denary number shows up, we know what letters we're looking at. So for example, I remember just from doing it so often that A, a capital A, is the number 65 in ASCII. And I believe a lowercase a is the number 97, if I'm not mistaken. Quite simply, protocols are how we govern communication so that everyone can communicate. I don't speak French. I speak very little Spanish. But if I met someone who spoke Spanish and only Spanish, I would have to try and converse with them in the language that they understand. That's what protocols are. Another way to think of this, um, this is an example I give my classes all the time as well. Whenever you watch those American TV shows and there's always an officer that says we have to follow the protocols. The protocols are simply the rules put in place to manage us, to manage our behavior, to make sure that we're doing things the right way. I'm going to be speaking about TCP IP, email protocols, voice and video protocols, web page protocols and security protocols. So first and foremost, TCP IP. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol, and IP stands for Internet Protocol. So what TCP does, it's used to create the packets and reassemble them. So Transport Control Protocol is used to split the thing up, so to create the packets. So imagine a packet as, let me open Paint, and maybe I can try and explain that this way. So imagine this is your, I don't know, Word document, right? Your Word document, your PowerPoint, your voice note, whatever, right? This entire block here. Before it's sent across the net, before it's sent across the internet, the network, whatever, it's split up into four or five, however many pieces is desirable. And it then sends individual pieces. So this is my destination here. It sends individual pieces. And what happens, the TCP is a thing that actually breaks this up. And when it gets to the other end, it puts it back together so the person know, okay, this was a voice note that the person sent me. This was, I don't know, um, an image over WhatsApp, a video, whatever the case is. That's how it does it. Now we have IP. So internet protocol is simply used to route the packets. It's used to direct them, tell them where, tell them where to go. So this is essentially the postman. It knows the routes it needs to take. So let me undo a few of these. So let's say this packet needs to go this way. Very direct, very straightforward. This one, number two needs to maybe go up here, down here, go around here to get to its location. And this one, again, more, more or less the same thing, goes all around the world and come back. Number four has to go this way, and number five can just go straight across, right? So this is what IP does. First, we're going to look at the email protocols, and namely they are SMTP, POP3, so that's P-O-P-3, and we have IMAP. The first one I have here, as you can see, is SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail transfer protocol now what is this it's simply used to deliver the email message over the internet so this is what essentially sends it to the right person the right location whatever you want to label it as so this is used to send the email that's all you need to remember for this nothing more detail you do need to know what the smtp stands for which is again simple mail transfer protocol next we have pop 3 or post office protocol version 3 is used to actually retrieve the email from the server. Um, it does allow you to download the emails onto your devices. This is the main difference between POP3 and IMAP. They both offer receiving emails, but POP3 allows you to download it to your specific device, whereas IMAP, it connects you to the server each time. So you don't actually have to download anything onto your device. It simply opens that email client, that Gmail app, that iCloud app, whatever you use for iPhones, and it allows you to read your messages, um, 
on the actual server. So it connects you to the server every time. Whereas POP3, again, you can download them. All right, so next we're looking at voice and video calls. So the protocols that govern these. We have H323. And as we can see here, this is one of the first voice over IP. So VOIP, Victor, Oscar, Indigo, Papa. Protocols for reliable internet communication. So when you're looking at, this is going to be mainly um, for stuff like WhatsApp, voice calls, video calls, Skype, so on and so forth. All these services are going to be for that. Next, we have SIP, Session Initiation Protocol. And again, if you look at that, it's in the name. It tells us exactly what this does. The session, the thing you're working on is initiated. And this is a protocol that actually manages that. Next, we have RTP, which is actually um, similar to SIP. It's real-time transport protocol. So um, as you can see here, a network protocol used to deliver streaming audio and video media over the internet. So very similar to the other two, but you do have to know that they all do audio and video. Next, we have protocols for web pages, and we have HTTP and HTTPS. Very similar except for the HTTP is the older unsecured version and HTTPS is a secured version. Let's see if I can find an example here. Um, okay, here we go. So on this website here, I've gone where I said file transport protocol. As you can see, there's a padlock here. This one, it's HTTPS, meaning it is a secured website. Whereas the previous one, which only had HTTP for some reason is not secure. As you can see, your connection to this site is not secure. Most browsers will say something like this as soon as you click onto that padlock or in that location where the padlock should be. Um, it's used to allow web browsers and web servers to transfer files, so to communicate with each other. Very similar to FTP. Um, the files we're speaking about in HTTPS are simply, for example, the websites themselves, the HTTP code that's written, um, HTML code that's written, sorry. And FTP, file transfer or transport protocol, again, it's in the name. This is what governs the way we download, upload, and transfer files from one location to another on the internet. So your WhatsApp, your emails, your Instagram, your Snapchat, every time you have to download, upload, share, um, whatever you have to do to a file for someone else to have access to it, this is the thing that governs it, file transport, transport protocol. Lastly, we have security protocols, and the main one we're going to be looking at is SSL, Secure Socket Layer. And we also have TLS, which is actually being phased, um, phased in where SSL is being replaced. So SSL, slightly older one, TLS is a slightly new one. Um, so we have Secure Socket Layer, and we have uh, Transport Layer Security. So you simply have to know that SSL is good for security, and TLS is good for security as well. Now the SSL, what it says here is are popular cryptographic protocols that are used to imbue web communications with integrity, security, and resilience against unauthorized tampering. Quite simply, integrity means that there is a way for us to check that what was sent is what the actual what the other person actually received. Um, security, let's just think of encryption. One means of security is, is encryption. Resilience means that the file doesn't get damaged or lost along the way or mess with it anyway. And against unauthorized access and tampering. So when someone gets gains entry to a system or a place without access, it's called unauthorized um, access or tampering. And TLS is a cryptographic protocol that provides end-to-end -end security of data sent between applications over the internet. So again, more or less the same thing, just a newer version of SSL. Right, so from my experience, you simply have to know these protocols and their categories. So again, on the email, we have SMTP for sending, POP for receiving, IMAP for receiving, but POP, you can download the emails, whereas IMAP, you access a server each time. We have voice and video calls. We have H323, SIP, and RTP. We have web pages. We have HTTP and HTTPS, but we have to know that the S in the HTTPS means secured, and that's always the better one to use. On the web pages, we also have FTP file transfer protocol. On the security protocols, we have SSL and TLS. Most questions I've seen actually need, um, want you to use SSL because, again, this is a slightly older book. But TLS is the newer technology that most people, most web servers are going to be moving over to.